It's your Scratch Game Lacking Action. I'm going to show you how to really get it firing. So far in our Scratch tutorials, we've covered some basics. But in this video, we're really going to step it up and introduce some features that are much more like a game. What I'm trying to say is that I'm going to show you how to make projectiles. This could be firing a gun or a laser, it could be shooting a fireball, it could be anything you can think of. Best of all, I'm going to show you how to do it in two different ways. Let's begin. Alrighty, let's begin. In this video, we're going to do projectiles and to mix it up, I've changed the cat to whatever this strange creature is meant to be, but it's one of the ones inbuilt if you hit the choose sprite from library button. Let's find out its name, it is Bear One, and there's absolutely nothing creepy about it in the slightest. My projectile, I have done a ball, and all I did was literally paint a yellow dot, really small with the brush, that's it. You can make a fireball, you can make a bullet, a rocket, whatever you like. Abby we're going to introduce later on, she's in for an unfortunate time, but not to worry. The first thing I've done is to create some movement scripts and you can see how to do this in one of my earlier tutorials. And we'll hit the green flag to activate it and it says forever. If we're pressing the left or right arrow keys, it'll point in that direction and then move. So let's test that now. And our not strange at all bear is successfully moving from side to side. So let's start the projectile part. So all of the scripts are going to happen on our sprite 2, which is our projectile. And we're going to tell it, very simple to start, when the game starts, we want it to be hidden. We only want this to be showing and active and doing anything when we're activating our shoot command, which for the first version we're going to look at is using the spacebar. So let's put that in now. Let's come to events and say when space key pressed. And then come back to control and say create a clone of myself. Now to match that we have when I start as a clone. And just to explain what we're doing, this is copying professional programming, which is quite often object orientated, where you have a template or class, and then you create instances of that. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to set up the same script, and then it can make infinite versions of itself. Back in the earlier versions of Scratch, before we had this, if we wanted to be able to shoot lots of these, we would need to have the, the whole sprite and the script repeated over and over, as many as we wanted and it was really inefficient and a really big pain. So it's a really good improvement that Scratch has brought in with Scratch 2.0. Okay, when it starts as a clone, let's start programming this. So what we want it to do is to go to character one, because it's gonna fire out from there. We're gonna get it to point in the direction that character one is pointing. So instead of being a fixed 90, we're gonna to go to sensing and then down here we have exposition of Abby, but we're going to change that to direction of right one. Now we can tell it that we want it to show. And then we'll get a repeat until. And we might tell it until it's touching the edge. And of course what we want it to do is to move forward. So let's get a move 10 steps. We'll make the value smaller. And finally, to finish it off, we'll come back to control and we will delete the clone. So when we hit the space bar, it makes a new version of itself, which goes to the sprite, points the same direction as it, shows, and then keeps moving five steps until it touches the edge and then deletes itself. Let's test this. My character still moves and now I hit the space bar. My projectile comes out and deletes itself. So we've successfully made the most basic version of what we're doing. Let's step it up a little bit. Let's come to sounds. Let's get the pop sound. We'd probably want it to pop around here as we're shooting. Test that. Excellent. That's actually going to be pretty annoying for the rest of the video, so I'm going to get rid of it, but you've seen how to do it. We do have a slight problem here in that if we hold down the space bar, it will spam it and they end up too close together. So we're gonna put in a script that will help us slow down the firing rate. And we're gonna do it on this one here. So at the moment, no matter what happens when we hit the space key, it creates a clone of itself. What we wanna do is some checking to make sure that they've released that button before it fires a second time. 
So it's actually really simple to do this. Instead of telling it to happen automatically when the space key is pressed, we're gonna to come to control and we're gonna say, wait until, and then we're gonna to come to operators and click the not. And then back in sensing, we're gonna to go to key space pressed. So when we press the key, wait until we're no longer pressing it. Basically we've let go and then create the clone. Let's test that. Single presses work as you would expect. If I hold it down, nothing actually happens at all until I let go of the button, which means I can press fast and it will fire as fast as I like, but there's no cheating to be had here. Excellent. Let's step it up again. I actually completely butchered this, but it should be quite entertaining. I added a second costume to the bear to make its mouth open up and to edit it the way I wanted to I needed to change it to a bitmap and that made it really ugly but that's fine. I've pivoted the head back and I'm going to get it to shoot out of the head. So we're going to make our changes here on sprite 1 and we're going to tell it at the start to make sure it's on costume 1. And then when it receives a message to change the costume and then change back a split second later. The so message one, we're gonna to change to something like fire. And then when this happens, it's going to switch to the second costume. We might make it wait a fraction of a second, maybe 0.2, and then we'll get it to switch back. So if we test this now, nothing's actually changed. That's because we haven't sent that message that this is expecting to receive, the fire message. So we've got to insert it in the right place here. Let's come to events and say broadcast fire. And we don't want it straight after the space key is pressed. Otherwise it will happen independent of whether it's fired. Let's put it right before the clone is created. Time to test. Okay, you can see this horrible pixelization that I created, but not to worry, it's working. The next thing we want to do is instead of firing from the belly of the bear, to fire from the mouth instead. So we're going to make this slightly more complicated. We're going to get rid of go to sprite one. We're going to get the go to X, Y. And from sensing, we're going to drag out two of these. We're not going to put them in place yet. So the X is going to stay as is. It's going to be go to the X position of sprite one. But before we drag in the other one, we're going to come to the plus. And then we can put in this on one side and change it to the Y position of Sprite 1. And then we're going to enter a value. We're going to guess how far it is from here to here. I'm going to say maybe 30. We're going to join this up and test it now. Okay, it's pretty close. Probably needs to be a couple of pixels higher. So let's try 35. Excellent, the bear now shoots fireballs out of its mouth. And we can of course do this while we're running around just to check that it does it in both directions and that is working perfectly. Okay, version two, we're gonna do where we use our mouse to click and aim, which means it can shoot in a, any radial direction around from where it is. So instead of the space key, we wanna change it to be when the mouse is clicked. So we're gonna ditch this one here. Also gonna ditch our spacebar command from in here. We're gonna change it to on a green flag. Check this forever. If from sensing the mouse is down. Then we're gonna put inside here and once again, our mouse down. So keep checking this forever. If we click the mouse, wait until we're not clicking and then send the broadcast. So I can still move with the keyboard, but now when I click with the mouse, it fires and if I hold it down, it doesn't happen until I let go, just like it did before. That's perfect. Now this is not very effective unless we change the way that it aims. So instead of pointing in the direction of Sprite 1, instead what we want it to do is to point towards the mouse pointer. And this very simple change means every time I click, it's gonna face in that direction. Now it does look a little bit strange if it comes backwards out of its mouth, but hopefully in the game, you'll be facing the way that it was going. Okay, our last change, and that is poor unfortunate Abby. I have her hidden at the moment, so let's bring her back. 
And really we have two things that can happen with our projectile. At the moment we've told it to keep going until it touches the edge. But really, if it touches Abby, we probably want something to happen there as well. So let's make that modification now. First thing we're gonna do is to come to operators and we're gonna get the or. I'm gonna to say touching the edge or touching Abby. Just to test that, if I fire in this direction, when it hits her, it stops. If I fire up here, it goes past her and it stops. So, so far, so good. Now, what if we want something to happen like getting a point or making Abby disappear? Well, we're gonna add this underneath before we delete the clone. And we're gonna need an if else. We know that it'll never get to this part of the script unless it's touching the edge or Abby. So what we're gonna do is to duplicate this and put it in here. So after it touches the edge or Abby, if it did touch Abby, then we'll get something to happen. Otherwise, we'll just get it to hide. So let's put delete this clone inside here. If it touches the edge, it just dies. But if it comes over here and touches Abby, now it gets stuck there because it's waiting for us to tell us what to do because this bit's empty. Let's do another broadcast. And we'll do a new message and we'll call this one Sorry, Abby. Then after that, we can tell it to delete. Now we'll come over to Abby and we'll say when I receive, sorry, Abby. And then whatever we want to happen. So perhaps we'll import a sound for this one. We'll come up to the sounds tab and we will open up the ones that are inbuilt to scratch and we'll get it as sneeze, why not? pop okay now back in our scripts that will become available and then the last thing we'll get her to do is to hide but make it a little bit more fun at the start of the game let's tell her to hide and then pick a random position and then to wait a random amount of time not too long, probably not too short either. And then we'll get her to show. Abby disappears, I can run around. And there she is. Choo! <laughs> and that is ridiculous, but it works exactly how we wanted it to work. Hopefully you find this pretty useful. There's two methods here, so it should apply to a variety of games. Well, I hope this video helps you with your Scratch game. Over time, we're going to cover many more concepts and features that'll turn your game from average to a world beater. If you have a request, please leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.